Oh, was it for me? Oh. oh no! Oh no! Oh no, first drop. So two weeks ago, Google invited me over to New York and it got me thinking, could it be for the Google Pixel 4? Apparently, the Google Pixel 4 is the most leaked phone in leaking of smartphones history. It was leaked so much to a point where I actually believed that the phone was already out or someone would have already had it in their hands. But I can confirm with you guys that I have the official Google Pixel 4 and Google is so nice enough to actually give me the Google Pixel 4 XL because I went over to New York for the Google Keynote. Thank you once again, Google, for inviting me over. But how I got this phone was really in an interesting way, which actually makes today's unboxing very unique. So we're not gonna go into full details right now. Do comment down below if you want a full review of the phone. Today, we are going to see what's inside the box, all right? And it's not here because Google thought it'd be a cool way to give us a different approach for an unboxing. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Google New York for yeah. the Pixel 4 launch. Oh, so I know that you do many unboxings a year uh, all around the world. So we thought we'd make your unboxing a little bit different and special. Please turn around behind you to get your phones. Yay! Woo! Woo! Oh. 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 Whoa! Oh, oh, was it for me? Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! First drop. Winning. <laughs> you just broke the pixel. Thank you. Oh, that's dope. Oh, I have green hair. Oh wait, that's my very old photo. And I think I could actually say that my Pixel 4 was the first Pixel 4 to actually meet with the floor. I'm just kidding, all right? It was a different box that got hit on the floor, but the Pixel 4 was safe inside this pizza box. So we won't get into much detail, so there's a very nice uh, latch over here where my phone is. Ta-da! Yep, that's it. There it is. Ooh, ooh. Make sure you don't drop it like for real this time. There you go. Yeah. So Google came up with a very interesting way to uh, distribute us the phone. So this, this is actually... Uh, for the stand to put up the phone, ta-da, like that, you know, to make it look aesthetically pleasing when you put it on your pizza box. Ta-da, looks cool, right? It looks actually pretty dope. This picture that you actually see on the home screen is actually a drawing of me that Google made. So, um, they must have searched for me long ago because the last time I had green hair was years ago. So, yeah. So let's just dive in with our first impressions on the Google Pixel 4 XL with three things that I like and three things that I'm not really a fan of. Now before we get into that, let's just talk about the design of the phone. So they start with the original colors, clearly white, just black and added in a brand new colored option, oh so orange. As you can see, I got myself the oh so orange. However, the oh so orange and clearly white are the only phones with a matte finish at the back and just black has a full on glossy back so they totally uh, threw out the dual tone feeling at the back where it was glossy at the top and matte at the, at the bottom so you don't really have that difference in feeling so now it's either full on gloss or full on matte and that's one thing which I wasn't really a fan of I mean yes it's nice it's a whole new sleek look but I love the feeling of having like two different materials to touch because I like to fidget with my phone a lot and I, I, I tend to do this a lot with my Pixel phone uh, just to get different feelings, you know, you, you just want to touch something, you know, but now it's all matte. <laughs> On the back, they have a mini camera rig with two cameras, an ultra sensor and a flashlight. We'll talk about this later on. And the phone is surrounded by a matte finish border. It's very thick, as you can see. And they stuck with the theme of having a colored power button. However, as you can tell, there's no trace of a fingerprint scanner on the back, on the side or even on the screen because Google is super confident in their fast face unlocking mechanism because they just inserted a radar which is a first in smartphone history so this is the first thing that i don't like on the phone all right because as you can see there is a very big forehead on top but with good reason also all right so they have a camera and your front facing speaker right here but there's also the the mechanism for the radar on the top here so you have like a flood illuminator, you have IR cameras, you have the actual sensor and the dot sensor to, to scan your face. So the, that whole mechanism is on the top right here. Now this radar is actually very good because it's like a sensory phone. So it's like an aware phone. We like to call it an aware phone because it lets you know when you're nearby. See, it, it actually literally just unlocked without me even needing to face down, right? <laughs> so let me, let me repeat that, right? This is how fast the phone unlocks. 
that's how fast. So this is one of the few things which I like because the face unlocking mechanism, it's so good, it's so fast that sometimes I don't even realize that I actually unlocked my phone. But this is also something that I kind of dislike because personally, this is how I go about my day, all right? I put my phone in my pocket, I'm doing my work, yada, 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 and I get a notification on my phone. Ding. Sometimes I'm too busy, but you know, I always have time to just check notifications and put it back straight into my pocket. So what I'll do is I'll take it out, I'll look at my phone for notifications and I'll put it back in. However, see by the time I took it out, it already unlocked. So I might have accidentally unlocked my phone and put it back into my pocket and might have butt dialed someone by accident. So it's kind of a good thing and a bad thing because sometimes I just like to take out my phone, look at the notifications, think of whether they are worth my reply or not. It will, or it will take too much time for me to reply and I'll put it back in my pocket for later on. So then after that, my phone will just be unlocked in my pocket without me even knowing. So it's kind of a good and bad thing. It's good that it's fast. It's bad that it's also fast. If, if you understand what I'm trying to say, you know? Another thing I would love to call this phone is the anti-cheat phone because girls, I know you want to look through your man's phone. Sometimes you need their fingerprints, you need their face scanner, you even need to know their pin just to unlock their phone and they're very secretive about their phone. But trust me, you can unlock their phone even in their sleep. So let's just say I'm one of those guys with things to hide on my phone and my girlfriend somehow gets a hold of my phone while I'm sleeping. All she needs to do is just put it in my face and it's unlocked. It's unlocked. Just like that. And girl, feel free to look through his phone because cheaters don't deserve to have the Google Pixel 4. No correlation. Just, you know, whatever. And one cool feature about the phone that I entirely love is the fact that I have an interactive wallpaper with Pokemons, all right? So out of the, all the Pokemons that are here, I love my Pikachu, all right? Let me, let me go back to Pikachu. You even got Eevee. Yep, I got my Pikachu and with the motion sense, all right, this motion sense, which we'll get more into detail later on, I can actually interact with my Pikachu so I can actually like pet my Pikachu. I can even wave to Pikachu. Hi. Hi Pikachu, hi. But see, now this is one thing which is good and bad. The fact that it's good is because that I get to interact with my Pikachu. The bad thing is that now this phone has become more of like a hands-free phone. So this motion sense, Thing. It's, it's not new in a smartphone, right? This hand gesture things will allow you to skip songs on Spotify, answer or reject calls, or even snooze your alarm in the morning. However, after using this for a good two to three days, I don't see any point in time where I have to use my hands. Unless my hands are dirty and I'm listening to music and I'm like, eh, change song, change song, change song. But that's about it, honestly, because I don't see myself using this technology it's not a gimmick. It, I mean, it's a step forward in technology, you know, it's we're moving towards the future where everything's hands-free. But I don't see myself using it on a day-to-day -day basis because I love to touch my phone, okay? Imagine if I'm on a train, right, and I'm listening to a song and I want, I want to change songs. Was it, wouldn't it be weird to see someone just do this to your phone? It's, it's still not normal in today's society, all right? I would love to like, you know, click and press next. So it's kind of a good and bad thing about this motion sensor. I mean, it's a good step towards the right direction. Uh, maybe just not so much of a daily use. I, I, won't use it. I wouldn't use it daily. I would love to personally snooze my alarm. I wouldn't want to accidentally snooze the alarm and accidentally sleep in longer. I would love to wake up and actually have to press buttons to wake myself up a bit more because now I'll just find more reasons to sleep in. I'll be like, uh, whatever. You know, I'd rather like, uh, wake up. Look, okay, fine, I'm awake. So in the smartphone industry, everyone almost knows that the Pixel 4 prioritizes itself with its camera. However, this year, it was kind of disappointing when I was sitting at the keynote and they announced that they have actually taken out the ultra-wide lens or not even, not even taken out. They didn't include an ultra-wide lens and they actually added in a telephoto which is these two cameras at the back all right you've got your standard camera at the back and you've got a telephoto in the back and i, I was kind of taken aback when they said that telephoto is more important than ultra-wide i mean it's it's kind of in a way yes because i think telephoto will be nicer for a landscape photo when you're out in the wild, if you're out in nature, if, you're, if you want to take a scenery kind of photo. But I spend more time with my friends and most of the times when we have a large group of friends, you will want to find a nice angle 
to capture everyone. So yes, an ultra-wide lens would definitely be better. I mean, most of the new smartphones on the market now has an ultra-wide angle lens at the back and front. And to not have it on the Pixel 4 was kind of... It wasn't heartbreaking. It was kind of like, oh, okay. However, the Google Pixel camera software, all right, is still pretty awesome because there's a brand new night mode called Night Sight and it can actually help you with your astro photos. So, so now all those night photos you think that are, are cool will look even cooler when you can put it, when you can dock it like somewhere and actually capture the stars because you, you can't actually capture it like just like that, right? You still need to put it down somewhere, actually capture the stars. And this phone can actually capture pretty good night shots, which we'll talk about if we are going to do an in-depth review. So comment down below if you guys want an in-depth review of the phone. But that's all for me for my first impression on the phone. Will I still use it on a day-to-day -day basis? As of right now, I'm, I'm still gonna hang on to this. And okay, an another thing which, which I, I, I'm not really a fan of, all right? Now, this thing only affects me only when I'm on Instagram, but especially when I'm viewing Insta stories, all right? As you can see, in the corners, it actually gets cut out. I, I know it's not a full display, but still to have it like cut out at the corners, it's, it's kind of jarring for me. It's not really something that is aesthetically pleasing. It's just something that really just irks me just a little bit. I mean, just a little bit. Not so much to a point where I'm gonna like uh, throw it away, you know? It's just very, uh, you know? At the corners right here. So yeah, guys, so that's all for my first impression on the Google Pixel 4 XL. Do let me know down in the comment section below if you want us to go in an in-depth review. So once again, thank you Google for sending me over to New York and also for the very cute idea on how to give our phones to us and um, yeah, I actually legit brought this box over from New York. And once again, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Do remember to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and comment down below what are your thoughts on the Pixel 4. And until then, see you guys next time. Bye-bye.